we got live audio right now. It's kind of up to them. I'm coming with you. We've got live audio, and we will be live on just a few minutes here with video. We're down at the Mojave Museum of History and Arts with Mr. Andy Sansom. Let's see. Anyway, I did add your name to the list, so you should start getting any type of whoever says anything about anything. You should be included in that list. Excellent. Thank you. What time is it? What time are you? Is it? Well, they want to start it by 11 because they're going to feed everybody. Normally, it depends on them. Okay. Now, what we did, we got it going like at 10 or 11. And then we catered lunch, and they all ate, and then we sat around while we ate and visited some more. Okay. But what you're doing, even on the... Andy, you want some water? No, I'm fine. They're on the... Uh, see, you can talk to the people from Bullhead, Havasu, Chloride. Hey, I'm writing a book. Michelle, I got water down there. Thank you. Where can I show them, you know, in your areas? Yeah. I don't know how far, <coughs> like the one after Bullet's going to be Quartzsite. I don't know if you want to get involved with that. I don't know how far away is Quartzsite. Within two hours? <laughs> I'll find out. I went through it. <laughs> uh, searchlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to meet these people. Because it, there's an, I think it's wonderful what you're doing, pulling all the historical museums yeah. together. We, see, they did this before. And it phased out for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But we brought it out. We don't want anybody in charge. It's just a group. Yeah. I think it's great. See a load of a new friend. And we had pretty good luck. On an old Telling the other museums how our Take problems. A trip of they hear what we ran into. In the mysteries like we heard unknown. from a... Come along for the ride. Jim Pinkley's America. Or the photograph was splitting. Jim Pinkley's America. And I said, well, we're back here, You know, you want to use an acid-proof glue. And then just, we just had a book on it. Yeah, I probably should be stained that I know. I said, go online. You know, there's all kind of ways they do it. There's all kind of professional people that will do it. I think they want an arm and a leg. Depends on how far you go. Right. And then there's all kind of programs, you know, if you got a bad, you can go on there. These, there's all kind of software you can get to, you know, revive your photographs. Well, good morning, Mr. Andy. How are you doing this morning? Oh, here he is. We're safe. Keith's here. Well, we got a nice live program. And Hello, Keith. How you doing? Mr. Andy, it seems like this is becoming a habit where we get together on Friday morning well, and tell a few tall tales and stretch be, the truth a bit. It could be a good habit. Very good habit. Sit down. So you got some guests. Watch the cameras right, uh, right there. Well, Mr. Andy, today we're going to be talking about Kingman's celebrities and film history and how sometimes they stretch the point on what was a Kingman movie and what isn't a Kingman movie. That, so I would rather say Kingman area or Mojave County movies. Well, because, Michelle, uh, that one uh, that was out on the rear ranch, uh, the west, that was not ever filmed in Kingman, was it? No, no. That was out there. And Hackberry. The I mean, it school, wasn't yeah. actually physically in Kingman. Not in the, not in the town yeah. itself, no. But I like that after what Jim told me about it. At the end of the movie, they're herding this group of cattle through Hollywood. Downtown Los Angeles. Which later, the road they were using was Route 66. The following year, that was the, the western terminus of Route 66, 7th and Broadway. And from what I understand, Buster Keaton could not get permission to
to do that uh, filming, uh, 1925, I believe it was. And it was, um, so he just went ahead and did it and then uh, paid the price later. They didn't repossess him or nothing. Uh, Fatty Arbuckle has a uh, has a uh, cameo in that final sequence right. in that. Well, what else you got for us now? You mentioned a Harry Carey was well, here in 1919. The most, I did a little thing on Facebook. I asked a lot of my friends, what was your favorite? And the biggest response I had was The Edge of Eternity. Mm -hmm. Everybody really went for that. Because <clears throat> it was filmed here in Kingdom. You know, I just watched that recently again, and that is an excellent movie for anyone who wants to see Kingman, Route 66, in the 1950s. Oatman. Oatman in the 1950s. Yeah. Dr. Arnold's house. Yeah, I wonder if that was Dr. Arnold's house. That they, that's the one they used up yes. there. Yeah. Okay. Judy and I were just talking about that, trying to place whose house that was. Yes. And it's still there. Now it is owned by Molly... Myers <laughs> used to be Molly Arnold. <laughs> what uh, uh, you think? Nineteen nineteen would probably be the earliest major motion picture here, and that was Harry Carey and John Ford. Ace of the Saddle. Ace of the Saddle. I'll have to look that one up. And there's no no copies of that left, are there? None. No, none. It's not exist. The Duncan family is supposed to have been used for authenticity <clears throat> in it. An article was about that. Now, who was in it? Uh, Harry Carey. I mean, yeah, Blizzard. I can look it up. Uh, that no, it's interesting. John Ford, you know, all these guys, uh, big name people, came to Kingman area filming these kind of things. Yes. It's amazing that we didn't do more, or that the city didn't pursue that more, or still hasn't pursued that, because you know, we, for a film location, pretty much got it all here. Well, we got hills here. We got desert here. We got the river here. We got. Buster Keaton's Goat West. You can find us on YouTube too, by the way, folks. If you want. Yeah, probably. You guys can join in, yell at us. <laughs> we won't have you on camera, but we'll have voices, disembodied voices out there. The uh, movie Convoy. That's another one a lot of people say. Well, that was actually filmed, I was telling Jim, at the old Needles Bridge that the uh, Bureau of Reclamation put in during the construction of the dam. Uh, they went over the side of it in their semi, and it burned up. That's how they got rid of the bridge. I like this cheesy flicks. That about sums this up. I, I yeah. did watch this one too but recently, kind of just in the background while I was working, because uh, to kind of familiar myself with what we're talking about this morning. But there was a lot of this in the Needles, Needles, right. California, and of course Las Vegas, New Mexico figures very prominently in this thing. Well, I just found one here. It's called Thunder Run. I'm not familiar with that one. That one was actually Laughlin and Bullhead. Really? They, I don't know how they did it, but they actually had some some parts of the movie filmed in one of the casinos. And that's almost a no-no. That is really hard to do. But anyway, I noticed the first thing, I said, well, that's the old uh, car wash in Bullhead. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, how did... Uh Boy, that's tough to get permission to be doing that down there. Those yes. casinos are really sticklers. Yes. And I guess if you try to get a picture of a gambling table, that, they're going to shoot you. We mentioned uh, Edge of Eternity in this one. This is, one of the, I think, one of the best for really showing Kingman. Yes. And, and uh, that. Cor the courthouse downtown Kingman, Route 66, Inside open. the courthouse. Yeah. And actually, the... Uh, <clears throat> They used the Bat Caves at the time. Right, right. Well, which is now... Grand Canyon West. Grand Canyon West and the uh, Glass Walkway. Yeah, outside. the Skywalk, sure. Yeah, that was all filmed in that area. But that is a... I like it because it starts out coming up through Gold Road. Mm-hmm. So it goes into Holtman. And so I think that's probably one of the better ones as far as the area. Well, Foxfire did a fair job. With some, with some scenes. I wouldn't watch them, believe it or not, film a scene. And I think we sat in Oatman for about four or five hours watching them do that one scene that probably lasted 15 seconds in the movie. Well... But that was the only way that one really got tied into Kingman was the place they were staying was actually the... Uh, 
the golf course, uh, country club. <laughs> and I always like that one because it starts out, Jane Russell going down the road, has a flat tire. These Indians come up behind her. She doesn't have a jack. They don't have a jack, so the Indians say, well, you know jack, we know jack. What's the diff? But the guy driving the truck, the Indian's husband, I'm assuming, when they did the premiere here, he was in jail. Oh. I actually led him out of jail to attend the premiere of that movie. I don't know what he was in jail for, but... I was, uh, this particular movie, Roadhouse 66, I have a feeling William Defoe and Judge Reinhold both would uh, prefer that people didn't know they made this movie. It's pretty low budget, but... Uh, the only bad thing I don't like about that one is the, uh, the language in it. It's yeah. a little rough. I was involved in this movie. I was between jobs, and uh, I actually got to work a lot of this project. And I have to laugh about this, the junkyard scenes that they filmed, you know, out mm -hmm. there. Uh, I was the ultimate American capitalist on this particular project. I could not believe I was getting paid for what I was doing, but uh, during the day I was uh, cleaning some yards for some people. You know, like I say, I was in between, in between work, and in a couple scenes in this you'll see my truck. I've got an old 46 GMC, fits right into the junkyard. Now I'm going to have to go look at it again. But uh, I uh, was cutting, they, they paid me to hire, bring tumbleweeds and stuff out for the junkyard. So during the, the mornings, I was cutting weeds out here, and I was filling my truck with tumbleweeds and getting paid to take them out to the junkyard and let them sit there with my truck. Well, when they did Roadhouse And then they fed cents, me good, too. I found out a lot of it was filmed inside of a bar. Yeah. The inside was the tavern bar. The inside was the tavern, yeah. The outside that said Roadhouse was actually a house across the tracks it, on uh, Old Trails old, old Road. Trails Road, and yep. it later burned down. It did, and that was actually a store and a bar in the 1920s and 30s. Right. It's funny because yeah. a guy wanted, he saw it, and he wanted to know if we had any information because it used to belong to his parents, grandparents or something. Of course, we didn't. Other than what's in there, that's the only thing we had. Yeah. But we don't show that because, you know, all these movies you can come into the museum and watch. We'll put them on for you. We continuously run movies. But if it's one you want to watch in particular, we will put it on. We try to stay away from that one because of the kids in the museum yeah. and the language and... Edge of Eternity, I've got up on the screen right now, and that, that uh, was a major, you know, cast, all-star cast. Right. Now, was that an Academy Award-nominated film? Was that correct? Or? Couldn't tell you that. I don't know. Hmm. Now, I think How the West was one. Yeah. I think it was at least nominated or something, but again, it was not filmed mm -hmm. in Kingman. And I'm using City Limits. Right, right. It was filmed in Oldman. And a lot of the stars stayed at Kingman. And then the railroad scenes were on the west side of town. Yes, that is a... And we have that right now in our little state theater, if you want to come in and watch it. Very good. What else we got here? Have... How the West was won, you mentioned that one. Of course, Mars Attacks wasn't filmed exactly that in Kingman, but they, there were some scenes at Red Lake. Um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas had some scenes filmed at the uh, uh, Kingman Airport. Yeah. Of course, Universal Soldier is really famous with a lot of Route 66 fans because they rebuilt Cool Springs and blew up Cool Springs. Right. Hmm. That's when they started on Hoover Dam, wasn't it? You know, I couldn't, I can't Went remember. From Dam to the airport, I, a few shots downtown. I've tried to, to, to uh, watch a few of these before this program today, so we could talk. This one I just can't, I couldn't get through. But. Well, now there's two of those. I'm oh, sure there is. Reverse, two universal soldier. Uh, uh, return, I think, or something. And my, my plan always told me better to fill your head with useless knowledge than no knowledge at all. Uh, grapes of Wrath. There's a great, uh, they filmed that one scene when they were crossing into California down there on the Old Trails Bridge, the National Old Trails Bridge from 1916. And then uh, in uh, Easy Rider, Peter Fonda crosses, uh, that was the, the bridge down there, the 1916 National Old Trails Bridge was the first Route 66 bridge to carry traffic right. across the river. And then uh, the last bridge to carry, uh, which is now I-40, down there, the last Route 66 bridge. You know, Peter Fonda crosses that in Easy Rider, and you can see the old bridge in the background there. Well, I think the original bridge, you had to be real careful because it was also used for the train. But in the oh, yeah. center of it, they had wood so you could drive on it. 
Yeah. You just had to be real careful what and time you was trying to cross it. That was the 1890s railroad bridge. Yeah. And then in 40, I think 46 or 47, when they bypassed the 1916 National Old Trails Bridge, they used that railroad bridge, they redid it as a highway bridge and then built a new railroad right. bridge. But uh, yeah, Edsel Ford talks about that in his journal, 1916. You could either take the ferry across at Topak, or you could get a railroad timetable and judge your crossing on the river on the railroad bridge in between trains, which is just to add a little excitement to the That's trip. another pretty good in the Badlanders. If you're one of the old Kingman, the old Trove, you know, they have the Badlanders room. Oh, at the old Trove Door Motel, yes. huh? Sure, okay. This one they I'm not never really with. said that it was named after that, but I kind of have a feeling because of the time and the stars hung out in the back room, which later became the Badlanders. It, was this, uh, this was filmed a lot around chloride, correct? Uh, the mining and everything was in chloride. Mm, okay. The actual housing, the, the town was in Tucson. Mm. But one thing about that, uh, Ernest Borgnine, that after this, he married Katie Gerardo. His, so they became very good friends during the filming of it. Well, I have a project for everybody out there. Uh -huh. uh, Bob Bo's Bells, if he's watching this morning, and uh, I've been turning up some really interesting things about uh, Germany during World War II, where uh, the Nazi government, the film, the film commission. Uh, the American West has always been really, really big. Well, apparently the Germans filmed a series of westerns in Arizona. Hmm. With with heavy uh, Nazi type themes at that point, but they were uh, uh, De Kaiser of California was one of the films, and I know they were filmed around Sedona and and other locations in Arizona. But I don't know all the filming locations. But hmm. I've been told that some were filmed around uh, Colorado River Valley. Yeah, I just did a search on Kingman, and they come out with twenty eight movies that was filmed that had was credited to Kingman and mm -hmm. I my turn <laughs> and one of them and I don't remember what movie it was the guy and a girl was sitting this and he told her I'm going to they were in Phoenix I'm going to Vegas by the way Kingman now all of a sudden it's accredited to Kingman well that's really stretching it well uh, High Sierra Humphrey Bogart yes they do that the same thing. Uh, I just I just caught that the other night. They were talking about uh, he put her on the bus, and the the bus driver says, Where, "Where's the next stop?" And he said, "Kingman." So. You've got Mars Attack, Universal, so Planet Fifty One. I have no idea. Zoom. I think Zoom's the one that had a picture of uh, Wendy's. They pulled into Wendy's and bought a hamburger and left. Two Lane Blacktop, which I think oh, Kingman yeah. tried to get out of that one. You know, it's become a real cult classic on that. And when they come up, what we call used to call Perfume Canyon out right. there, the sewage ponds there, Route 66, uh, coming up the uh, post-37 alignment of Route 66, you can hear them listening to KAAA radio station out of uh, Kingman, Arizona. Well, I think the reason it got such a big following is because of the uh, Dennis Wilson from the Beach Boys mm -hmm. and James Taylor. Yeah. I think that's how they kind of got theirs. Uh, view from the top. I don't know. That one I'm not familiar with either. Nurse Betty, the Badlanders, which we talked about. Roadhouse 66, second time around. I don't know. Go West, Foxfire. Well, here's a... Foxfire did use a lot of local people in their movie. To kind of move this, you know, we're talking about movies, but of course we have Celebrity Association here. I mean, yes. off the chart Celebrity Association. <laughs> we're not talking about Pamela Anderson now, are we? Well, I have been asked that story a lot about, you know, yes, uh, it, it was kind of blown out of her. She wasn't really arrested. No. But, but uh, well, it, it was... I think she was arrested, but that's as far as it went because I don't know if you guys know the story about Pamela Anderson. She did a nude shot. Or semi-nude. The topless. Man. Topless down on 4th and Andy Devine, I guess it was. Trying mm -hmm. to think of the time. Anyway, she got arrested. Only thing she did is she had to write a letter of apology, I guess, to the city or something like that. But that's as far as that ever went. Uh, of course, Andy Devine was a big one. A lot of people yes. don't know who Andy is. And, you know, and of course, time passes. I'm and... not Andy Devine. No. <laughs> 
I'm glad you clarified that, Andy. That's good. But, uh, of course, he has, his family had a long association here. And Tom Devine played a pretty important part, kind of stretching a point about uh, Route 66. He was part of the Good Roads Association. Yes. Uh, he was the owner of the Hotel Beale. He was quite a politician. Yeah. And he and some business owners here and from Needles, uh, with backing from the railroad, went to the 1912, 1913 convention, National Roads Convention in Kansas City, and rerouted the National Old Trails Road through Kingman in this direction. Before that, the National Old Trails Road actually went down through uh, Albuquerque and then Magdalena, Springerville, and over down through Globe, Miami, connected mm -hmm. the Ocean Ocean Highway in Yuma. And that's why the Madonna of the Trail statue that's along the National Old Trails Road is in Springerville. And that takes us to a kind of... But you know, I've always story. thought it was kind of funny, too, that Andy Devine. He never had a movie from Kingman. And he was in hundreds of movies. Yeah. yeah. He, he was, was always never, never, you know, he was never the star, but he was always, he was known. He was well known. Well, I still like the man who shot Liberty Valance, I think, was probably my favorite one with him. Stagecoach with John. He played a lot with John Wayne. Yeah. One of the stories, and we talked about this once before in one of our long rambling times, but uh, I've never got confirmation of this, but I do know that uh, Andy Devine and Will Rogers were, were somewhat close. And I understand that Will Rogers introduced Andy to his wife, Dorothy. Well, I showed you that one picture, yeah. Will Rogers and Dorothy together, right. but it never said any more than that. But I, I've, I've got it from a couple sources that uh, Andy attended a New Year's Eve party here in 3132 at the Hotel Beale, and Will Rogers came, and his wife came with him over here. I've never been able to confirm that. And I was telling Michelle was brought it up about Karen Steele. She was actually, after she married Dr. Rulin, which is a psychiatrist locally, mm -hmm. I think that was probably in the 70s or 80s. They lived out in Golden Valley. Mm -hmm. Michelle was going to look it up, but I think she got lost. She's trying to check her bank account now. Well, you know, another one here with Route 66, we had two things that brought a lot of celebrities to Kingman. World War II with the Kingman Army Airfield and, the, uh, and of course, people traveling Route 66. And I was telling everybody this morning, my wife, uh, when I, we joke about this a lot, but I read the Kingman Daily Miner sometimes on a monthly basis, like once a month. But every morning I get up and read the newspapers that you post from 1930 and 1932 and 1890. And uh, like the Bob Hope Show came to Kingman uh, during the war. He brought quite a few uh, mm -hmm. stars. And even at the airport, Fairfield, Charles Bronson, he was stationed here. Uh, Clayton Moore. Clayton Moore. In fact, I understand Clayton Moore married a local girl. I don't know who knows him, but... He was uh, the Lone Ranger. Uh, Karen, yes. Karen Steele, who lived in Golden Valley, was in Ride Lonesome, Marty, and an episode of Star Trek called Mud's Women. Yeah, she put that quite a bit in movies. Yeah. Claim to, claim she to. died of cancer. When I, was, I, did a, when I wrote the book, uh, the Route 66 Encyclopedia, I was looking for celebrity associations and communities, and you mentioned Star Trek, Muds, Women. It's funny how some of these towns will have uh, an obscure celebrity that they just blow and, uh, I mean, just huge. And, uh, of course, then here we have Andy Devine, which is a relatively big star, but it's a little town in Illinois, and I, I, the name escapes me right now. But uh, the lady's entire claim to fame, her, her entire celebrity history, amounted really to one movie, and it was uh, Hercules Meets the Three Stooges. Oh, that would have been. <laughs> was that up for Academy Award? Uh, you, you know, you just, yeah, you got to laugh. And they made a whole monument. And, yeah. uh, you gotta, everybody's got to have something. I do, I, and one of the questions I have to ask is, um, well, I've got a couple here for you. But uh, you posted something a while back about the colored USO party. Yes. Where was uh, the USO here in Kingman for the, the African-American soldiers? And number two, what kind of celebrities did they bring to town, I wonder? The USO, as I understand, was that the area that the train depot is now in that area. Mm, I don't okay. know how it went about, but, but it was actually over in there. 
Somebody told me it wasn't at that one, but it was up at the intersection of where the second, where the train crosses or the railroad now was there, so I don't know. Hmm. But as far as the celebrity on the color people, I don't know of any, but they, uh, they had, they had their problems back then too, though. Oh, most definitely, most definitely, yeah. Because, you know, obviously we had our famous racial sign. The one that may or may We're not, not going to talk about it. it. The one that may or may not have existed at well, some location or other. Yeah, but. Tracy Neal wrote it in her book yeah. that it was removed in the 40s because they didn't want Kingman to seem racial. Although when the Army come in for their airfield, they built colored swimming pool, white swimming pool, they had colored mess hall, they had officers white. I mean, so the Army itself was so segregated. Sure. But yeah, that has always been, no one has ever really been able to say the colored USO club was here. And it was also brought up back in the 40s if they had a USO involved dancing, were the local girls involved in it? I don't know. You know, that's, that, that, that raised a whole thing, a bunch of stuff. I know that, uh, let's see, I think it was Pearl Bailey. Uh, was here in Kingman during that period, so you know, might have been a possibility. She actually tried to buy a ranch here and set up a dude ranch, and she actually ended up buying one over in uh, Apple Valley, mm -hmm. over by uh, Dale Rogers. Uh, but there was a lot of me in the Rogers and Dale Evans. Alan Sprint. Ladd, he tried to buy in the Bullhead area. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Big Boy Williams, he played in a lot of Andy Devine type movies. He was actually part owner of the uh, motel down there in Bullhead with Chad Trower and them. He uh, can't think what it was called right now. My mind's going. One of the things I really like about the things you pull up to is these little snippets like uh, Joe DiMaggio stopping here for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Route 66 funneled so many people through this town. and There was a lot of them that stopped in here and loaned their names, too, just for different money things coming up. So like we were talking about, was Amelia Earhart here? <laughs> yeah. Well, we finally found an article. A guy owned a drugstore, and he asked, said, yes, she was here. They went out for lunch. But, so yeah, I guess she was here. Yeah, with a ribbon cutting, I guess, out there. Something, the, I don't know. Yeah, port, uh, the ribbon cutting with Port Kingman with Charles Lindbergh, and that was, that was quite a big deal. But we know Lindbergh was here because we have his autograph. And we have his picture sitting right over here. Yes. Uh, but we don't know anything about Clark Gable and Carol Lombard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, that's a, that's another can of worms, isn't it? You know, I, I, the the to the best of my recollection of understanding is the guy who owned the Oatman Hotel. In fact, he changed the name to Oatman Hotel in the in the sixties. Ox. Well, yeah, it was the Durlin Hotel, and then it was the Ox and something. Yeah. Then he changes the Oatman Hotel, and interest that's that that whole legend of the uh, Clark Gable Carol Lombard honeymoon starts about 1967 68, right when he bought the hotel. Claims to have found a ledger, and then it accidentally burned up in a fire. We contacted him, and he said the reason they don't have the register is because it burned up in the big fire. Well, the big fire he was talking about in 1938, yeah, they got married in 39, so that didn't. That doesn't that line doesn't up now. Mean. No. But, we, we do know they married married in Kingman. And I understand there was a real short, impromptu, just quick reception type deal, coffee and cakes down at the Brunswick right. at the restaurant. But His best man was Howard K., which was later a uh, school teacher. Hmm. But it was one of those rental best man. I mean, people walk coming through, they want to get married, they got to have witnesses. So they go to their rental list. Well, here you can use so-and-so and... -so and well, uh, Andy, what are we uh, what are we going to talk about next time? Because we've become making this kind of a habit. I want to talk about ghost stories, <laughs> hauntings in Kingman. Well, that could be interesting. We we yes. Can you do a nod to a children's movie, Cars. Oh well, Cars, sure. That, that changed everything on Route sixty six. A whole new generation, and. Uh, a lot of it's generic stuff, but you know you can see like the mountains, you know in the background of the tail fins. That's Cadillac Ranch in Texas, and and Radiator Springs was kind of a compilation of Peach Springs and a couple other little towns that were 
were hopelessly bypassed and, and by the but that that movie really changed everything on Route 66 for an you entire generation. Must have a question. Yes, no. please, please. What you got? Are you from Kingman? No, we uh, saw a, a post on Facebook about this, and we're from Las Vegas, and oh. thought we would just take a trip. We're glad to have you. You came down to Vegas to see our smiling faces. Yes. Well, well God actually, bless. Uh, Jim probably has people on there from Germany. Yeah. So. We, we were we somehow I, I I jokingly call this Mayberry Television. We do this on Friday mornings, get together here in Kingman with different people, different locations, and and uh, somehow I, I you know I don't know how this thing attracts five to fifteen thousand people in an international audience, and you know I, I, it always surprises me. It just it really does because people used to I just can never imagine that people would ever pay me to beat my gums. That's a it's that was just always the opposite. They wanted to pay well, me to stop. Well, I just stop. want you to tell them where to go. That's what I've been doing since about 1990, Andy. Guys, I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning, and uh, we'll do this again next week. Not sure where yet, but we've got some ideas. And uh, tomorrow morning I'll have a live program, live stream with all the events and uh, updates on things that are taking place along Route 66, tour groups coming through. Um, Got a pretty full week, uh, a lot of neat stuff coming up. We'll share more tomorrow, but uh, I'll be talking with uh, Mojave Community College, and then I can provide details tomorrow about the uh, tourism and hospitality classes I'll be teaching in Bullhead and Kingman this year. And we'll be uh, this afternoon, I'll have some information for you. I'll be meeting with a nice group from uh, the Norway that I meet every year when they travel over at 66. And I should have some details on you, uh, some exciting new details about the uh, Route 66 navigation app and uh, Route 66 Passport, the next edition. And uh, let's see what else. Oh, uh, the, the Dutch Route 66 Association Tour. On our book. And then we got, of course, Howdy Kingman is something you need to follow if you're interested in history of the Kingman area or great places to get lost because uh, we got some good places around these parts. Anything else, Andy, you got besides come down to the Mojave Museum of History and Arts? And we will... Say hi to you. Yeah. Well, you know, I keep teasing you about this, but we did an episode of this one year down in the basement, and I think we need to do that again. We need to get the parrot's it tomb. to be cleaned up a little bit. <sighs> no, no. <laughs> we'll get the parrot's tombstone out and just yes. have, a, have a hoot and good time. That could almost be a story in itself after what I just posted about the sporting lady. <laughs> I think I, this was her parrot. I tell you, I got I, I had I, Some of the stories you've been digging up from the newspaper... I, I'm not a politically correct person, but some of this I just find humorous. The, the murder situation where the um, uh, Chinese fellow was killed. And they actually put in the newspaper that he was he's a loss to the area. He was the whitest Chinaman we had in the area. And I thought, my gosh. Yeah. The newspaper weren't too politically correct back then. Oh, my gosh, no. And I think we'll let it go with that. <laughs> so you drove all the way down from Las Vegas this morning. We did, yes. Well, God bless yeah. Do you have any questions for us while we're here? Andy knows About all the Kingman? stories. and If he doesn't know the answers, you watch how good he can make them up. First Friday tonight. First Friday, downtown Kingman tonight. All right, we'll check it out. Do you have any questions for Andy or Kingman history? Yeah. or? Just fun to check it out. And well, God bless us. Route 66. Oh, we'll help you on that. Before you leave, I've got some this stuff for you. This is Mr. Route 66. Folks, everybody, thank you for joining have, us today. I have one. Yes. Um, a plug-in for Andy's group on Facebook. Old Happenings is a wonderful place to read what Andy posts about the museum in the local area. As long as it doesn't involve politics or religion or wanting to borrow money from me. <laughs> I hide. Guys, thank you for doing this this morning. Thank you, Jim. We'll see everybody next week.